As a broadcast journalist, Vanessa Govender was a role model for the new generation of professional women in electronic media, but her private life concealed a dark secret. Vanessa had to deal with a viciously abusive partner, and her survival depended on finding the inner strength to rebuild her life. She recently published a book telling her compelling and inspiring story, and Karusha met Vanessa to find out more about her personal brand of courage. In the early years of the new millennium, millions of South Africans knew Vanessa Govender as a fearless TV journalist who always wove the human element into her stories. Never relying on cheap sensationalism, she was an empathetic listener as well as an engaging reporter. And because her viewers and colleagues could trust her as a professional, few knew that on a personal level, she was living a lie. Nearly two decades later, she's finally telling her own story. With over 20 years in the media industry, as a news anchor, journalist and radio host, Vanessa Govender is no stranger to the limelight. But what she did keep a secret was that she was a victim of domestic violence. In her book, Beaten But Not Broken, she tells all, and I have the privilege of chatting with her today. Vanessa, it's such a pleasure to meet you. It's lovely to meet you. I can see that you've got your book with you. Yes, I do. At what point did you decide to put pen to paper and tell the story? I've been a survivor of domestic violence for 13 years. In recent times, we've been overwhelmed by stories of women who are being raped, who are being maimed, and who are being killed by their intimate partners. And I just got tired of listening to these stories of more and more women who are becoming victims. And for as long as I remained silent, I was protecting my abuser. The time to speak out, to own my truth, to own my story has never been more critical. I think women in South Africa have been waiting for a narrative like this, almost a permission, if you will, to own up, to speak out and to stand up. Being in the public eye for over 20 years, do you think that that was a hindrance in you being able to come out and tell the story? People have a perception of who you are, of what they see on TV. And this perception was this strong woman, glamorous. And for me, that perspective of myself was far more attractive and far more appealing than having to put up my hand and say, I am a victim and I am a survivor. Do you feel somewhat responsible in the acceptance of the relationship for as long as it went on? I accept responsibility for my part in the relationship, for having stayed. But when you're in it, you've got fear instilled in you, the shame instilled in you, and those things keep you prisoner. But here's the thing, you as the victim, give those fears power by keeping silent. And what advice would you give to your young self that found herself in that relationship and any other woman that finds herself in a similar situation. There isn't a one-size-fits-all solution to domestic abuse or to gender violence for that matter because the dynamics of every relationship is very different. But not just the victim, her family, her friends, her work colleagues, her community, people need to stand up. There's this thing of, it's not my business, it's not my problem, I look the other way that is not going to cut it anymore. Because if you are silent, if you even at best suspect something is going on, you need to speak out. Because here's the thing, silence empowers the perpetrator. There is a stigma around domestic violence, especially in intimate relationships. People do say things like, oh, it's a husband and wife, it's not our business. Within the Indian community, there are certain things you do not talk about. Sex before marriage, consuming alcohol, smoking, and domestic abuse. You know we don't speak about these things, but it's happening and I think the tide needs to turn because your children are having sex out of marriage, your children are drinking, your children are experimenting. Empower your girl child, but beside empowering your girl child, empower your boys because we as women are raising the men we grow to fear. Vanessa, talk to me about your childhood and how it was growing up. It was quite a poor background. We grew up in a two-roomed, tin house in an area called Keita Manor. My father was a waiter, a bus driver, then a truck driver. And he always instilled in us the importance of education. And his words to us were, I never want you dependent on any man for anything. And thankfully we had that background because it came to shape and define who we would later become as women. And your passion for journalism, where did that come from? I always loved writing. 
I love storytelling. I grew up with my sisters telling me stories, my mother telling me stories. And writing was pretty much the only thing I was actually good at. So journalism seemed the natural course to take. Vanessa, you've chosen such a beautiful spot. And look, so perfectly a peacock. How magnificent. Beautiful. Why are we here? It was on January 17th, 2012, that I took my wedding vows in the gazebo here in Mitchell Park. And this place holds very special memories for me. And you and your husband have a bakery? Yes, we do, not too far from here. In fact, maybe let's go over, have a cup of coffee and you can meet him. I'd love that. Let's, let's go. go. Vanessa and her husband run a popular bakery and coffee shop with a footfall of over 20,000 customers a month. Vanessa, I know that you are also a children's book author. I've written a children's book under my married name, Vanessa Tedda. It's called The Selfish Shongololo. It's a delightful children's book that celebrates the beautiful South African concept of Ubuntu. So basically, this very selfish, greedy worm that gets taught a valuable lesson in friendship, kindness and sharing. Oh. Here's my lovely husband, David. Hi, darling. Hello. This Hi, David. Nice to meet you. Hi. I've heard good things. Thank you. Enjoy your coffee. Thank you. He's lovely. Thank you. I know you guys have an interesting love story. It's interesting. It's technology and the universe that conspired to get David and I together. So we met on Twitter. He's seen a story I'd done on TV. He's watching the news that night and he tweeted me. And I don't normally respond to viewers, but there was something about his eyes and there was something about him that drew me to him. Six years later, three children later, still madly in love and he has been the most beautiful, profound revelation of how a man should treat a woman. So my story does have a happy ending as any good love story usually does. Oh, I love a happy ending. And now that Beaten But Not Broken has been released, what is your main message to young South African women? You have infinite power. There's so much of possibilities. Reach for everything. Stand up for yourself. Speak out. Own your truth. Own your story. There are remarkable women in South Africa doing remarkable things. We have all these women as role models to look up to. Find them, find your truth, find your space. Never let anybody dim your light. You have infinite potential, every single one of you, by virtue of the fact that you are a woman. That in itself is something to celebrate. Vanessa's story reminds us that no matter where we are in our lives, telling our truth is our greatest power.